Hey everybody, it's PJ from Wisconsin Air Gunners. In this video, we head over to the Scout Air Guns booth to see the upcoming release of the Scout Epoch. If you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe as I'll be filming more videos as the week goes on. Right into it. Everybody, with many, many requests for this, we are at the Scout Air Guns booth I'm talking to Bill Gardner, and he's going to walk us through. The epoch. Yes, I am. Well, first thing, what most people want to understand is how it works. And this is our valve. This is our transfer block, our valve seat, and our valve. And this is a 400 thousandths orifice that we open the valve. With most air guns, to open a 400 thousandths orifice, you'd need a very large hammer. But what we're doing is a little different. The plenum pressure is around the shaft, and we move the we move the pressures in two directions. So with this O-ring, we're pushing this way. And with this O-ring, we're sealing. So we only have a small force to overcome the difference between those two forces to open the valve. And the way we do that is we have a small solenoid valve that puts a low pressure pop, about 120 to 150 pounds per square inch, roughly 10 bar. And that opens the valve. Now, the trick to an air rifle, in my opinion, is to get the valve open quickly and get it shut quickly. To get it shut quickly, we take the air that's actually driving the pellet down through a micro orifice to this very large surface in the back and that gets it shut. So what that allows us to do in one platform we can tune from sub 12 all the way up to 150 foot pounds without changing a spring or anything in the gun at all. And, the, and it will remain very crisp. Some of you are familiar with shooting slugs in certain guns. You may have to put in a heavy hammer and a light spring to get enough dwell or uh, to get that slug out at velocity. Because of the size of the orifice, we're able to get the slugs out very fast with a very crisp shot. So then we'll move on to the regulators. So this is the low pressure regulator. That's what adjusts that little pop of air that opens the valve. And this is our high pressure regulator. It's a little different than other regulators, and it's a balanced regulator. It gives us a couple benefits. The primary benefit is we can turn the regulator up and down without having to degas the plenum. So, and that's the main way that you'll set your velocity is to set this pressure. It also, in the inadvertent situation where you develop a small leak across your regulator seal, this reg won't continue to climb. It'll actually, because of the balancing effect, it'll actually vent but maintain pressure. So you can actually finish the day shooting. Of course, you get it back to us. And they're built in a modular way so that a dealer or anyone can very quickly stock this component. And there's a hex for a socket. Take the socket in, screw this out, screw a new one in, and you're up. We've built everything around that, including the valve. There's a valve tool that goes over this. You pull the whole valve in, put a new valve in. For the, some of you who had to work on air guns, sometimes it can take 25 to 30 minutes to get to a valve in a gun. This gun, you remove three screws, and then there's four screws that go in here in the, in the chamber block, and we're in the gun valve within three minutes. So it's quick and easy, and it's designed for easy maintenance. So now, let's talk about the barrels. The barrels are unique in that when you buy a Scout gun, you get three barrel inserts, not one, in one caliber. So you get a neutral, which is the standard barrel size, say 30 cal. You get a plus, which is a thousandth larger, and a minus, which is a thousandth of an inch smaller. So it allows you to tune a pellet to a barrel as well. There's obviously many different pellets in the market, many different situations, and through experimentation, you find out which of these insert works best for you. The coatings on these barrels are very important and special. This is a nickel Teflon, okay, with a phosphor. The phosphor is what de develops the hardness. But basically, as you wear this barrel, and it would be very difficult to wear, but say you wear a millionth of an inch off this barrel, the Teflon is impregnated into the surface, and it comes to the surface as you shoot. So actually, the barrel becomes more lubricious as you shoot, and there's not, it's hard to lead because the lead can't stick to the Teflon very well. So they stay clean for a long time. Those in the gun world may have known this coating as I think Robar at one time. It was used, um, I believe in ARs. You could shoot uh, 50,000 times without lubricating, without any wear. So it's a very, very strong and good coating. 
the, by the way, the barrel technology, we developed our own barrel technology. Um, we, it's, um, so the rifling and the methods, they're, they're unique. Uh, we're not, we're not going to discuss them because they're proprietary, but um, it is actually our own barrel. So as far as the barrel lengths go, we offer two lengths, 25 inches, which is approximately 625 millimeters, and our long barrel is 35 inches, which is 889 millimeters. So it's a, it's a very long barrel. We also lock our barrels into the gun in a completely different way. So this is the transfer block, and we pull two tapers together. There's a taper here, a matching taper, and we use a ratcheting device with these teeth to pull the barrel in. So it's pulled in, it's not just one point like set screws, it's pulled back from all the way around the taper. And then there's a double O-ring support in the front of the gun, and that's where your other point of support is. But you can see how this works. This is the ratchet release, and on the other side of the gun is the ratchet. You can hear the ratchet? Yep. So that's the method that pulls that barrel in. Our um, magazines are quite neat. They have uh, magnets that pull them into place, so they always find the right center. We also it's a magnetic cap that holds this as well, and we do uh, our stops a little different. We don't put a stop in. We want people to be able to wind at different rates. So 30 caliber, are two winds. But if you if you wound twice on 177, you start to crush your pellets. So basically, you can experiment with it and determine what wind what wind you want to use. All solid aluminum um, machined, and and they will probably maintain this way. At least that, that's our intention. The back of the gun has full adjustability, very solid with clicks. Also here, loosen these up, okay, and we also have our cheek riser. Now, when we get into the performance of the gun, the trigger is just very, I'm going to turn it on. By the way, it talks to you. It'll tell you its name. It'll tell you as you make your setting changes. And you can also turn off the sound if it gets irritating or if you're hunting and you don't want it. So the trigger is, there's a circle back here. The gun knows if the action's closed or open. You see the circle changing, maybe. Okay. So yep. basically, now the trigger is is in grams. It's about 89 grams, which is hard, that hardly anything. How do we make it safe? Well, we have a momentary actuator switch here that you have to push before you fire. So once you'll 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 hear um, switches off. You'll hear fire fault. That just means you pulled the trigger, but you didn't, you didn't have the actuator in the right switch. And that's programmable, three modes. Hunt, in hunt mode, we turn off the sound, and you have to hit the actuator every time, because you're walking through the woods and we don't want you accidentally firing the gun. Match, you're shooting a bench competition, say it's 30 minutes, you can set the timer for 30 minutes, you don't have to hit that button all the time, you can continue to shoot. And then the final is limit, and that allows you to set an intermediate time period, say, say you want this to be active for two minutes, you can set that. Another really unique thing about the electronics, if you let a gun sit for 20 minutes, we get what we call stiction, which means that the O-rings take a set on the components. So your first shot, your point of impact, may easily drop on the first shot till you break that friction and you're able to shoot. So what we do is we incorporate what's called first shot drop software. And that allows you to pick a time frame for your gun, experimentation, to figure out what that is. And then we'll add four extra milliseconds of pulse to the solenoid, break that friction, and get your point of impact pretty close to where it should be on that first shot. Um, as far as electronics go, you start to see some of them, but you can um, very quickly put this into programming mode by turning the gun off, opening the action, holding this button, and powering it up. That'll get you into programming mode, and then you move through the menus by hitting this button again. When you hit the on-off button once, it'll, it'll allow this button to ch make the changes. Then you come out, power down, and it saves your settings. Um, from a pressure standpoint, we've managed, because of the large orifice across the valve, we can get some very low pressures. My, I prefer, in pellet, uh, 30 caliber, 44 grain JSBs. So with my long barrel, 
shooting at 915 feet per second, my plenum pressure is 73 bar, wow. which is 1,100 pounds. I'm still making the bar transition. I'm, yeah. I'm much better in pounds than I am in bar, but I'm getting there. So very low pressure, very quiet. Um, let me see. Oh, this is a bleed valve. So this allows you to bleed the entire tank off, tighten it down, um, lock it up. Your regulator adjustments are down here. And you've got- So you can regulate it without pulling out anything. Right, you're just turning these knobs. And you can turn them by hand if you're strong. If you're not, there's an Allen key. Okay. Um, also, the um, pump swells. There's three different sizes. You get this great kit. See, let's, let me get this kit in here. So basically, we give you a plain old hard case with the gun. There's no cheap case. And you get a spares kit with each gun. And the spares kit gives you, on this side, valve tool, tool to take up, change the back of the barrel for your different calibers, a complete parts kit with an extra spring for your magazine, a lot of urethane O-rings for charging kit. And then when you come over to this side, you get a tool kit, grease for the gun, three sets of pumps, so if your hand's large or small, you can change out that grip size. So that's what comes standard. Now people ask about the battery. If you shoot a thousand rounds a weekend, you can shoot for four months without recharging the battery. And if you do, it's 20 minutes. So you're never gonna run into battery issues. Also, a lot of people think this is new technology for us. It's, it's not, we've been doing this for 30 years in the paintball industry. So the electronics are very refined. At one point in time, we had to submerge the guns, shoot them underwater to show people what it would do. But we also don't use any connectors. When you take this grip off, there's gold pins, pin connectors that come right off. There's no, you're not playing around with wires. It's very simple to do and, you know, very straightforward. Um, let me see here. There's a lot I have to remember it all. I think I'm getting there though. Um, do I you know, have any questions? I know the question that's gonna come up in the comments. All right. And what? you probably know what the question is. I may not. What is it? When can someone get one? Oh, they're shipping now. Really? Uh, 30 cal well, the rollout will be okay. uh, 30 caliber, 25 caliber, 357, 177 and 22. 22 not by design. 22 has been um, making these barrels been one of the more difficult barrels to get right okay. in pellet. Our pellet liners, we like real slow twists. One at 38 in the, in the 30. Obviously, the slug liners are in the works. You know, there'll be more between one and 14 and one and 22. Um, but they're, they're getting there. And even with the slug liners, you'll always end up with three, three inserts per size or caliber, so you can still, you know, get the, the slug that works for you. Uh, color, I should say that. We, we, we really have been, we are very good at customizing guns. In the background, I don't know if you can see them, but there's a green, a gold, and a red gun. Um, that's gonna be about a $200 upcharge to the retail customer. We also do some really interesting colors. Yeah, it's all the These uh, These are sublim, this is anodized, not, paint or anything sublimated right in, so we'll be able to make some incredibly unique looking guns in the future. We also have an interesting, for the great shooters, we have an interesting challenge this year for uh, Rocky Mountain and EBR anyway. If you, in the, prof in the professional division, if you score in the top 10 with our gun and you're the highest, pers the highest um, person within that top 10, we're giving you the gold gun. So we'll do that. We're, we've picked two so far. We may extend that to a few more. We're, we're thinking about it and talking to people. So that's part of our, you know, introductory stuff. Um, What's the MSRP? Two thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars. And if I want to switch to, <coughs> let's say I, I buy it and I buy it set up for pellets, and I decide I want to go slug. Right. What's that kit? going to cost? We don't have, uh, it's going to be in the $300 range. We okay. don't have the exact price of the kit yet. And there's also a question as to what length barrel, because the long barrel is more expensive than the shorter barrel. But you're in that, you know, you're in that $300 range. And sure. once you, once you end up getting one long barrel and one short barrel, I, I have to go over one more thing I did, which is the compensator. I will do that. Now you're set for all calibers, pretty much. Once you have, you know, you don't have to buy this again. Okay. And also the moderator, 
and, and, and indexing, two questions people come up with. The moderator is pretty unique. It uh, comes with every gun. And I'll just show you the porting. So we, these, this, there's a bunch of holes that are all angled that port the first amount of gas back into this carbon tube to take the first hit. And then we have a compensator with a component in here that is changed per caliber. And that would be this shredding device. So this, so if you change caliber, you'd also change this, put it back into your compensator. And then people ask, can our barrels be indexed? And I'm gonna show you how we index barrels. So this is the, the cap that holds our insert in place. And it's a lot of threads here, but I'll get it out. Um, so we make the O-rings in this piece tight. And the reason we do that is, give me a second. All right, so there's a small mark right there, if you can see it. All right, so I can take this barrel, turn this cap a quarter turn, and now when I thread it back in, this will turn with the thread, follow the thread. Because it's sandwiched in there with an O-ring. Correct, and with two O-rings, and, and they're a little tighter than the ones down here. So basically now you can count on that, going to the bottom at that index, and you can keep, you know, index you until you're all the way around all until, you, around until, you're, until at you're at ready. you want. Exactly. Uh, accessories people will ask about and do ask about. So <clears throat> we're working on our extrusions right now to be able to bring to go around the tank and allow you to, to put your weaver, you know, uh, to mount your your, um, your bipods, not on the tank, but right. well under the tank. Um, obviously, you can use the tank, and we also have the M locks in this system where you can mount them on the side of the gun. Um, another accessory in here, we'll put a, a tank adapter so that you can fill the tank separately. We'll also probably put a second, a third regulator in here because, like I'm saying, if I'm benching, if I'm shooting this bench, which I at, with uh, 44, and I only have 1,100 psi needed, I probably want to bring this pressure in around 1,800 to 2,000, so that this regulator doesn't work as hard, and my standard deviation right. will get better on my shots. Uh, I think that's about it. Probably missed some stuff, but if you that's have any a, other, great, it's a great overview. And uh, I'm excited to see one out in the field. I, uh, Great. We've got probably 100 yards here. I mean, if we could just uh, get a few people to step to out of the way yeah. and might get in a little go, trouble with that. Go one. somewhere and get a compressor. I, yeah. I think we could set up a target over there and, uh, and, and do a little. From shooting. our experience, the 25-inch um, barrel is about one one MOA in you know, perfect conditions. We have 100-yard indoor range. Mm -hmm. In fact, we welcome people to, to come and visit us in our company and see our range, shoot the guns and everything. And the, the, the long barrel's definitely better. It's less than one of them away in 100 yards. And it's by far my favorite. It's super quiet and down at that 1100 PSI, the gun's hardly moving. So that's just my preference. Well, a lot of people are very excited about it. And I think seeing it here and, and listening to the passion that you're bringing to it, I think for good reason. So I appreciate your time today. Thank you. And wish you guys the best of luck. Appreciate and it. I'm sure we'll see you out on the field at some point. Yep. Definitely. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And until the next video, shoot safe and shoot straight. We'll see you around.